Cetine in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. The immediate post-World War II era was one where uh, the Soviet Union, one of our allies in World War II, uh, had done something quite bold. The Americans, the British, went home after the war from the European fear. Joseph Stalin and the Soviets stayed put, prompting Churchill to warn that an iron curtain had descended across the continent. Winston Churchill was arguably one of the most recognizable and popular figures in the world. He had helped the Allies win the war against Nazi Germany, uh, and it was a great triumph. Churchill made his famous victory speech, saying, this is your victory to the British people. The British people did not respond in kind. Uh, in fact, there was a general election, and Churchill's party lost. He won the war, he lost the election. Um, so in the immediate aftermath of World War II, Churchill found himself without a job. Churchill was no longer prime minister. And at that moment, he received an invitation, a simple typewritten document from Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri, inviting him to come to Fulton to speak here at Westminster College to deliver a lecture. In the margin of this letter, there was a small handwritten note that said, this is a wonderful school in my home state. If you come, I'll introduce you. Hope you can do it. Harry Truman, Missouri's own Harry Truman. When the President of the United States wrote that famous postscript, Winston Churchill was elated, uh, and he immediately accepted the invitation, uh, telling President Truman that he was coming, and we began to prepare for a visit from the sitting President of the United States and the most recent past Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. In place of the programs originally scheduled for this period, we present a special rebroadcast of an address by former Prime Minister of Great Britain, the Honorable Winston Churchill. The occasion of Mr. Churchill's address is the traditional lecture of 1946 of Westminster College, located in Fulton, Missouri. I do not believe that Soviet Russia desires war. What they desire is the fruits of war and the indefinite expansion of their power and doctrines. Churchill's warning here at Westminster College was one that unless the West, namely the United States and Great Britain, formed an alliance, uh, built sinews, as he called them, of peace to deter Russian aggression, uh, that uh, the Soviet Union and communism would in fact spread across Europe. Uh, that warning uh, was in many ways the beginning of the Cold War era, which occurred in a gymnasium on a college campus here at Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri. Twenty or so years after Churchill's speech, Westminster College had another bold idea, and that was to build a memorial or a monument or some sort of um, marker that would recognize the Iron Curtain speech and Churchill's uh, great message. Uh, and you can imagine uh, a committee was formed and someone said, let's put up a statue, let's put up a plaque. Uh, and someone said, let's bring uh, a Christopher Wren church that was bombed in the Blitz in World War II from central London to mid-Missouri. That was the idea that stuck. And the idea, the audacious idea to move this Wren church from London to Fulton uh, was born of uh, the, the really prescience uh, and boldness of Westminster College leadership uh, and actually a nation uh, who rallied around Churchill's cause, uh, rallied around Winston Churchill's speech, uh, and even Churchill himself, aged 88, knew of this project and endorsed it. Uh, so the idea to establish a museum, uh, not only to honor the speech, but also Churchill's leadership legacy, uh, was, was born uh, of that idea. And over the course of the 1960s, 
um, the project gained steam, and by the end of the decade, uh, in May of 1969, uh, the museum uh, and this uh, great church of St. Mary the Virgin Aldermary was rehallowed here at Westminster College uh, as a permanent memorial and marker to Winston Churchill, his leadership, and his legacy. America's National Church and Museum has over 10,000 objects, papers, speeches, letters, uh, sculptures, paintings related to Winston Churchill, uh, his life, and his legacy. Uh, visitors who come can experience the past here in the present. So when you visit the museum, it's kind of like stepping into a little bit of British history. Uh, it's fantastic that the oldest building in the state of Missouri is actually British. But you go in and you feel a part of history. And it's a history that everybody's heard. They've heard of the Iron Curtain speech. They've heard of Sir Winston Churchill and his, his fight against communism and raising awareness of the, the dangers of communism. Uh, but to walk in and realize that Fulton, Missouri and where the museum sits is a key part of that history and that special relationship between our two nations, uh, it's a phenomenal place to be. Churchill's Iron Curtain speech uh, is a terrific lesson uh, in leadership and uh, in vision. World leaders continue to come to Westminster College, to America's National Church and Museum, to make their own speeches uh, about the world affairs. In 1989, uh, the Berlin Wall fell. Uh, the concrete manifestation of the Iron Curtain that Churchill warned about at Westminster College had been built and then came down. And Edwina Sands, who was Winston Churchill's granddaughter, had a terrific idea to create a sculpture comprised of eight sections of the Berlin Wall, punctuated by an uh, abstract male and female figure. And she entitled the sculpture Breakthrough. Visitors can literally walk through this concrete barrier that for decades had divided uh, East Berlin and communism with West Berlin and freedom. It was dedicated on the college campus one year after the fall of the wall by President Ronald Reagan, who had famously, years before, said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And I think it's extraordinary that as the wall, in fact, was torn down, was rebuilt as a symbol of peace and a reminder of freedom, um, where Winston Churchill gave his Sinews of Peace address in 1946. The wall is also a place where Mikhail Gorbachev, the last president of the Soviet Union, came in 1992 to speak from behind the same lectern that Churchill used in 1946 to formally and officially essentially declare the end of the Cold War era. So the breakthrough sculpture on our campus is an extraordinary uh, and rich historical uh, moment. This museum is not something about the past. It is about the present and engaging folks. I often say uh, to visitors and our staff here, if history seems old, we're not doing our job. Uh, we need to make history come alive. Spend a day. Spend a day walking around the museum, engaging in history, realizing that the center of the U.S. was an absolute pivotal moment. Fulton, Missouri was a pivotal moment in world history. Uh, and it was, it was something that impacted the world for decades that followed. Uh, so I encourage you to spend the time, realize just how important the museum in Fulton, Missouri is to that, but then enjoy the rest of what Missouri has to offer. Incredible outdoor economy, incredible sports, incredible people. Uh, it's just an incredible place to, uh, to visit.